Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing around with graphic silver shrink film. Now this stuff, if you've never used shrink film before, it, well, it shrinks. That's why they put it in the name. We're going to take a rubber stamp. We're going to put a stamp on this and then it's going to shrink and it's going to end up this size. So it's going to go from this to this. And this, I'm going to show you how I use it in a mixed media piece. So here's the silver shrink film, and I'm going to ink up a rubber stamp and stamp it directly onto the film. Now the ink that I'm using is an archival or permanent ink, and once it is gone through the heating process, the shrinking process, it is going to be very, very permanent here. Now right now the film is very easy to cut with scissors, so any kind of cutting or shaping that I want to do with this, I'm going to do it before I heat it and shrink it, because it's going to become a lot thicker and a lot stronger once it's gone through that process. So for that reason, I'm going to take out the doorway area of this now. By simply taking a craft knife and going along the edges of it, I can easily remove that center portion. And right now, this is a larger shape, so it's really easy to work with, especially if you're impatient like me. And once it's shrunken down, it's going to look like this amazing, intricate, detailed item. Well, now it is time to shrink this. So I'm going to bring in a craft heat gun here, and that's going to provide the heat that is going to cause this plastic to shrink to a very, very wonderfully small size. Now, what I've got in my hand there is just something long enough that I can hold the plastic if I need to, if it starts to move around without burning my fingers. Something like a bamboo skewer also works extremely well, but I can't seem to find mine for some reason today. Then what I'm going to do is just put something on top of it to get it flat. And that's what I'm using the ink pad for here, just to push it down. You could use a, the back of a rubber stamp, the wood block kind of thing, a book, anything that you've got nearby that can flatten it out. Well, now it's completely cool, and it's got this wonderful depth to it, a thickness, and it's extremely sturdy. Now, I'm going to use it as one element in this mixed media piece. Now, as I'm doing this, know that this is a photo from someone that I don't know. If I was doing this with my family photos, I would have actually made like a copy of it and not use the actual original photo. But this is someone, I don't know who it is, so I'm completely comfortable using a real vintage photo to do this. Now another perk of using the shrink film frame here is that it's giving me the guide for where to color. That way it'll look like I somehow masterfully knew exactly where to place that color with these markers on the photo. But that's not really the case. I'm just using what I've shrunken as my guide for where I want to color. I put a little bit of green around the edge here, and now I'm going to find the words that go with her. By looking through some random pages in a book, I find the words that speak to me for her. I'm going to cut them out, and then I'm going to color it in with the same markers that I've been using to color in the photo. Now to attach this onto the photo, I'm going to use the very fancy tool, the toothpick in the gel medium, to allow me to put some around the edge of the shape. And wouldn't it be nice if I could do it actually completely on camera for you here? But you got the gist of how it works when you put gel medium on the back of something. Once I've got some on there, then I'm going to position it where I want it and push it down to make sure that I've got the glue or the gel medium adhering it well. And by the way, what do those words say? You're probably hard to read here on the screen. It says living their dream because those are the words that called to me as being the words that matched her and her journey. The shrink film became thicker in the process of shrinking and I'm going to use that to my advantage because it makes it act like a bezel here. So I'm going to fill her in with some glossy accents. Now I just put a little touch of it in there, just a little bit and I'm smearing it around with my finger. I want a really super thin layer, and I'm going to let that dry completely. Now, why such a thin layer? Because, well, if you get a photograph just wet with a bunch of glue, what's going to happen is, is that photo is going to then ripple or bubble the way paper does when it gets really wet. By putting a layer of the glossy accents on there and letting it dry completely before I come in and add more, what that's going to allow me to do then is Fill it completely in with that glossy accents and avoid any kind of paper buckling or bubbling. So I'm going to completely fill in this bezel with the glossy accents, making sure I completely fill it all the way to the edges. That way it looks like I've got liquid glass in there. So here's what it looks like as it's in the process of drying. It's cloudy now, but once it's dry, it will be completely clear and she will shine inside her shrink film bezel. Learn more about graphic shrink film at graphicarts.com.